Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting Robin and I here today um, to talk to you about something that is very important to us. Um, my name is Chelsea Cox. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and I'm the Associate Director of Education at UCI Mind, which is UC Irvine's Institute for Memory Impairments and Neurological Disorders. Chelsea呢是UCI 做一个项目联系人 UCI Mind is um, one of 30 Alzheimer's disease research centers across the country that's funded by the National Institutes of Health. Um, so today I would like to talk to you a little bit about first what is Alzheimer's disease and what is the difference between Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can do personally to reduce your risk for the disease. I'm going to talk about some of the exciting research in Alzheimer's disease and brain health that's happening right here at UCI in Orange County. Um, and lastly, I'm going to tell you how you can get involved um, in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. Huh. 那么今天呢我主要呢就是给大家首先呢我们就介绍一下这个失智还有呢阿尔兹海默氏这两个病都是病但是它的区别在哪里然后呢就是那么我们自己能够做些什么我们在 One of the most common questions that we get when we're out in the community talking about Alzheimer's disease is what is the difference between Alzheimer's disease and dementia? Mm -hmm. 那么我们在出去讲演的时候呢最常碰到的一个问题大家就问了那么这个阿尔兹海默氏疾病和这个失智那么到底怎么来区别它呢 Dementia is defined as a clinical syndrome characterized by a set of cognitive and memory problems that are severe enough to interfere with a person's ability to live their life the way that they once did. 那这个失智什么叫做失智呢就是因为这个人呢就是他丧失了一些就是能够平常生活的一些能力比如说记忆能力还有办事还有决定事情这些的能力那么丧失这些能力呢已经影响到他的日常生活了所以这个呢我们把
们就是引起失智的最主要的原因，就是比如说百分之六十到七十这样的病例，失智的病例呢，都是由这个阿尔兹海默氏这个疾病引起的。Because it is the most common cause of dementia, I'm going to focus on Alzheimer's disease for the lecture today. However, I do want to note that there's other causes of dementia that are also progressive and irreversible brain diseases that are also studied at UCI Mind. Those include things that you see here, Lewy body disease, frontotemporal disease, vascular disease, and Parkinson's disease. These things can also cause dementia. 那么今天呢，我大多数时间呢，我就要跟大家分享啊，就是这个阿尔兹海默氏。但是呢，其他的我们研究所呢，也进行一些研究。那么就是比如说是脑血管引起的失智，还有呢，帕金森氏。那么这
As the disease progresses, a protein made up of tau forms neurofibrillary tangles inside the neuron that interferes with the interaction between the neurons. 那么在你的疾病,疾病往下发展的时候呢,那也出现了这个我们叫做千神经纤维缠结,它叫做,那么这个呢,它就是从这个细胞的里面来破坏这个神经元的这些联系。Over time, um, the neurons, these proteins, the abnormal accumulation of proteins, um, ends up, causes the neurons to die. Um, and shrinkage that you can see in the brain here. In a severe Alzheimer's disease dementia brain, there's atrophy or shrinkage. And in a healthy brain, it's nice and full. And as these cells die, we see the symptoms that are characteristic of Alzheimer's disease, of losing memories and cognitive abilities. It may begin with the, um, perhaps forgetting how to calculate numbers or balance a checkbook, and over time, as more and more cells die, um, more we see more and more symptoms of memory loss and cognitive problems. 那么这个大脑病变到最后呢,就是这个神经元,细胞被杀死了,那么大家看到那个图片里面呢,就是左边这个呢是正常人的大脑,就是你看上去比较疯了,那么右边这个呢就是已经是比较,就是萎缩的比
the expected rate of Alzheimer's disease cases in Latino, Hispanic Americans, and Asian Pacific Islanders is expected to triple. 那么这个地方呢，就显示我们的一个数据哈，在到了呃二零三零年的时候，那么我们呃亚亚裔人和拉丁裔人，那么这个数字呢会有以三倍的增长。One of the reasons that we expect to see these huge jumps in numbers of Alzheimer's disease cases is that age is the greatest risk factor for the disease, such that for every five years that a person lives past the age of 65, their risk for developing Alzheimer's disease doubles. 那么我们从这个年龄来讲，哈，那么这个最大的风险因素就是年龄越大，这个风险越大。那么你超过六十五岁以上的，每五年，那么你的风险呢就翻倍。After age, a family history of the disease is the second greatest risk factor, and over twenty genes have been identified. That increase or affect a person's risk for developing the disease. The strongest known genetic risk factor is called the apolipoprotein E gene. There's a particular allele, the E4 allele, that increases a person's risk for the disease. However, not every person with a risk gene will develop the disease. And people can develop the disease. Who have no family history or genetic risk factors. 好，那么刚刚我们讲到这个年龄是最大的一个风险。那么在年龄之下呢，就是一个基因的问题了。那么现在呢，已经就是识别出来二十多种基因，就是有这种风险啊。但是呢，转过来呢又说，有基因的人呢不一定会发生这个疾病，而且没有基因的人呢。也不一定会没有不会发生这个疾病，所以这些呢就是一些不可预期的一些呃一些东西。So what we've learned through research is that there's other factors at play. There's lifestyle risk and protective factors that also influence whether a、uh, risk for Alzheimer's disease. 那我们讲到年龄，讲到基因，但是呢，我们自己能做什么呢？就是我们本身的这个生活方式，还有其他的因素。那么可能也会帮助我们来防御这个疾病。So now I'd like to talk to you about some of those things that people can do in their lives to incorporate healthy lifestyle factors to reduce risk for Alzheimer's disease. There's things that we cannot control, like age. We can't stop aging. We can't choose our parents. So there's things we can't control, like age and genetics. But there's other things that we can, and those are our lifestyle factors. 啊，那么在生活当中呢，有些有些因素呢，我们是不能控制的。比如说，我们不可能说是停止不不变衰老啊，我们也不可能呃不可能选择我们的父母亲啊基因问题啊。但是呢，这儿有其他的，就是我们生活对生活方式的选择，选择什么样的形式，选什么样的方式来生活。那么这个呢，是我们可以选择的。我下面呢就讲一下这些方面的。So although our brain makes up just 2% of our body weight, it、um, uses and consumes 20% of the body's oxygen and energy supplies. 啊，那么我们的这个大脑呢，只是占你的身体的百分之二，但是呢，它用到百分之二十的这个氧气和这个血液的这个供给。So,、um, a healthy heart ensures that enough healthy blood and oxygen is pumped to the brain to help it function properly. 那么，如果你有一个健康的心脏，那么就会能够把呃足够的氧氧分，或者是足够的这个血液氧气输送到你的大脑。Research has shown that things that are bad for our hearts, like obesity, midlife obesity, midlife hypertension, and diabetes and high cholesterol, all of these things that are bad for our hearts are also Bad for our brains and can increase risk for dementia. 那么研究表明呢，就是对心脏不好的这些因素，比如说是疾病啊、高血压呀，呃，还有这个高胆固醇呐、啊，这些等等的这些，那么对心脏不好，那么以后呢，对你的大脑也不好，也会引起大脑的疾病。And Asian Americans are at a particularly increased risk 
for type 2 diabetes. It's the fifth leading cause of death among Asian Americans. And it increases risk for things like cardiovascular, heart disease, um, which is actually the leading cause of death in China. 那么这个糖尿病就是说到这在这个亚裔人群里面的他会就是亚裔人群呢就患糖尿病的特别多那么就讲到在中国在那个就是这个呢是糖尿病他们他最后引起心脏啊就是心血管方面的疾病啊那么
对大脑也有帮助。What this food pyramid shows, I know it's kind of hard to see,、um, but this shows the food pyramid for the Mediterranean diet. Which incorporates all the basics of healthy eating. 好，那么这个呢是就是我们说到的地中海式的饮食啊。那么它呢这个是比较健康的一种呃一种合成的一些这些饮食加在一起了。In a study of over 2,000 older adults who lived in New York City, it found that those who strictly adhered to a Mediterranean diet actually had a 40% reduced risk for developing dementia. 啊，在纽约呢有一个跟踪研究，就是两千多人，两千多这个老年人的跟踪研究。那么研究下来呢，就是如果你严格的按照这样的吃，就是这个饮食习惯，保持一种饮食习惯，那么有百分之四十就是可以减轻这个病的风险。And similar to exercise, researchers have found that it's never too late to start. It's always a good time to start incorporating healthy.、Um, Eating habits into one's lifestyle. 那么就像那个锻炼，永远不会太晚。那么就是你现在开始，就是健康饮食也不会太晚。So of course, green leafy vegetables, fruits high in antioxidants, breads with whole grains, things like olive oil are very important components of a Mediterranean diet. 啊，那么这个呃地中海式呢，就是主要呃最重要的就是一个是水果蔬菜。还有一些坚果，还有吃那个油呃油呢，要用呃橄橄榄油。And a big focus, as you can see, is the intake of fish. 那么还有一个主要的呢，就是要要吃鱼。Incorporating fish into a diet has been found to be extremely protective、um, of our brain health. 啊。那么就是说，你在饮食里面加把鱼，就吃鱼这个习惯养成加进去呢，对大脑的那个健康呢是很有好处的。Having a diet full of fish nourishes our brain with、um, omega-3 fatty acids. In one study, which you can see up here, found that eating fish at least once a week, so in these two categories here. It was associated with a 60% reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease. 啊，吃鱼呢，至少一个星期一次，那么它也能减轻就是患病的这种风险。Addition, in addition to exercise and incorporating a healthy diet, we have learned through research that keeping mentally and cognitively active throughout the lifespan. And keeping socially engaged are great ways to help protect your brain health. 好，那么研究也表明，在就是你呃这个锻炼身体，然后呢就是饮食结构以后呢，那么就是要这个大脑你也要锻炼，另外呢要跟别人要交流，就是社交活动这些呢不能够一个人堵在家里面。好，这些呢对你大脑也很有帮助。Experts recommend doing things for your brain that challenge you. Things that you might not be really good at. So if you're very good at doing crossword puzzles, maybe switch it up and try something different that really challenges your brain. Trying a new recipe and then also being social and、um, eating your new foods with with family and friends. 啊，那么就是说你要学新的东西，这个是非常重要的。你已经老在做的事情，那么你就可以换一换。比如说是你做那个呃。这个呃字填字游戏啊，那么你可以换一下其他的哈。那么这些呢，要要新的东西，要稍微有一点点困难，就是我们说的要要对你大脑要有点挑战的这些活动。Now the exact mechanisms that cognitive cognitive engagement and social activity affect the biological changes in the brain is less understood. So there's more research that needs to happen in this area. 那么就是现在我们呢，就是对于为什么这个锻炼大脑做各种各样的这种锻炼练习，还有呢就是参加社会活动对这个大脑到底有什么影响呢？现在呢就是还就是没有具体的研究有一个结论，但是呢他知道它是有好处。那么这些呢还在继续的研究。Now more and more research is showing the importance of sleep for brain health. 啊，那么更多的研究呢，就表明了这个睡眠对于你的大脑的健康，这个呢是非常非常重要的。In fact, UCI just opened a brand new sleep center in Newport Beach, 
to be able to better understand and study things like sleep and its impact on brain health and Alzheimer's disease. 好，那么 UCI 呃，刚刚呃开新的开了一个就是睡眠研究中心，那么专门就是做睡眠，看看睡眠对大脑的这个影响，然后睡眠对大脑对这个阿尔兹海默氏这个疾病这些影响。刚刚在 Newport Beach 这边开了一个新的一个中心。What this graph shows is that people who got better sleep had a lower risk of amyloid, the beta amyloid that I talked about earlier. They had a lower level of amyloid in their brains. So when what is believed is that when we sleep and we get good quality sleep, our、um, brains actually clear themselves and clean themselves of this、um, damaging protein that accumulates in Alzheimer's disease. 好，那么刚才我们不是提到过一下这个大脑，这个就是呃这种呃蛋白质这种集存，然后呢杀死细胞。那么在有个也理论呢，就是说在睡觉的时候。那么你如果睡觉睡眠很好的人，那么这个大脑的这个蛋白质的沉淀沉积呢，会很呃会比较少一些。那么为什么有这样一个理论，就是说你如果有也很好睡觉睡得很好，那么你的大脑呢实际上是在清出这些呃这些蛋白质。So just as it's important to work with your doctor to control、um, risk factors for your heart, like cholesterol and hypertension and blood sugar. Um, it's also important to work with a doctor to ensure that you're getting the amount of sleep that you need for your body and controlling any sort of sleep problems or sleep disorders. 好，我们刚才谈到了，除了这个保障心脏健康，就是高血压啊、血糖啊、高胆固醇啊这些要注意，那么还要睡眠的质量，这个也一定要注意。So in summary, I've talked about things that can increase a person's risk for getting Alzheimer's disease. Those things include diabetes, which is particularly prevalent in the Asian American community.、Um, midlife obesity, midlife hypertension, and midlife cholesterol, high cholesterol, have all been associated with、um, an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease and subsequent dementia, as well as an emerging field of study,、um, sleep. 啊，那么我稍微总结一下刚才所讲到的这些哈。那么这些风险因素，哪些是风险因素呢？我们就提到了一个是糖尿病，一个呢是呃，就是呃肥胖啊，中年肥胖。另外一个呢就是高血压，呃高胆固醇。那么最后呢是现在研究表明的这个睡觉，就睡眠。On the other hand, there's things that can reduce risk for Alzheimer's disease and dementia, including controlling these risk factors. So maintaining heart health, getting physical exercise pretty much daily, at least five days a week,、um, incorporating a healthy diet such as the Mediterranean diet that's high in fish consumption,、um, and staying cognitively and socially engaged throughout the lifespan. You're already doing a great job by attending a lecture like this with your friends and learning more. 啊，那么呃，就是有保护性的一些呃一些措施呢，我们大家可以做的呢。那么当然了，这第一个呢，就是要有一个强健的心脏，健康的心脏。然后呢，你像刚才提到的啊，就是大家呢要饮食，然后呢要锻炼身体，然后呢要锻炼你们的大脑。要出去社交，那么大家来到这儿就是你们做的非常好的一个例子。Now, despite doing all of these things to reduce risk for Alzheimer's disease, there will still be some people who get the disease. 啊，那么不管就是说我们大家尽量都去做到了这些生活方式，还有这些检查，还有这些。呃，健康的呃这些活动啊，这些，但是仍然还是有人会被这个疾病所影响，会得这个疾病。We still don't know the cause of Alzheimer's disease,、um, and it's a disease that knows no racial or ethnic or geographic bounds. 好，那么这个疾病呢，就是因为它的原因很多，我们还不能够说是找到一种原因啊。那么他呢？他对各种各样、各个少数、各个族裔啊，各个都会受到影响，不管哪个地区啊，哪个族裔。So if a person is experiencing memory and cognitive problems that they're concerned about, it's extremely important to get an early assessment of what might be happening 
啊。那么现在呢，我要特别强调一下，就是早期诊断这个问题。如果你发现有人你自己或者是家人或者是旁边的人，那么有记忆方面的问题，觉得已经影响了你的生活了，那么你呃要进行早期诊断，那么要发现到底是什么原因引起这些问题。First, as I mentioned earlier, there's things that can cause dementia that might be treatable or reversible. So if a person is experiencing memory and cognitive problems, it's very important to get an evaluation to rule out potential other causes of dementia, such as vitamin deficiency, hormone imbalance, or maybe a stroke. 那么就是最主要，为什么要早期诊断呢？最主要的原因呢，就是有些引起记忆的这些问题的这些原因呢，是可以可以，我们就说的可以逆转的，就是可以发现原因的，可以治疗的。比如说我们刚才所讲到的这个维生素，某些维生素的缺乏，还有呢就是你的这个荷尔蒙，还有呢，比如说万一呢它是有一个呃中风啊这种情况引起的，那么这些呢都可以在早期诊断中发现。Unfortunately, if the cause of the person's memory and cognitive problems is an irreversible disease like Alzheimer's disease, it's important for many families to know that information in order to make a plan for the future. 啊，那么早期诊断的另外一个好处就是，如果确实是诊断是因为是阿尔兹海默是不可逆转的这种情况，那么家人呢有必要做一些计划，早一点知道呢怎么来计划，怎么来照顾这些。This also allows families and patients the opportunity to access local resources, such as connecting with an organization like UCI Mind. There's also supportive services in the community, like the Alzheimer's Association or Alzheimer's Orange County, who help families with support groups and all kinds of education resources that can help set people up to live um, with the diagnosis in the best way possible. 啊，那么另外一个早期诊断的一个呃好处呢，就是说，那么呃家人呢就可以找到，就是呃我们可以运用的，可以有的在呃比如说在呈现这些资源啊、这些信息啊这些，那么就更好的安排病人的生活，那么让病人呢虽然得了这个病，但是呢生活质量还是保持一定的质量。Also, there's researchers around the world who are trying very hard to solve. This health crisis to solve Alzheimer's disease, and so there's always ongoing and、um, clinical trials and studies of possible new, promising treatments. And I'm going to talk to you about some of those in a little bit. But families can 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 get connected with these types of research programs and learn about these things too. 啊，那么另外一个就是早期诊断的好处，就是说在我们全国各地或呃当地啊，全世界到处都有一些进行一些，很多人花了很多力量，不管是政府也好，呃，就是民间也好，花很多力量来研究这个疾病。那么在早期诊断以后呢，也许有一种这个临床研究会对家人会有好处。那么这些的信息呢，也是呃很重要的。And sometimes it might be appropriate. Um, to begin at current treatments. 好，那么有些时候呢，可以也也许会有一些呃，就是我们现在已经现有的一些治疗的方法。但是这个呢，当然是我们待会儿要讲的，不是说是会把这个病治好，但是呢，会针对一些症状。What I mean by current treatments are those that are currently approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. There's five treatments for Alzheimer's that have been approved for use in Alzheimer's disease that can help a person with their symptoms. 啊，那么现在呢，就是这个呃国家呃食品药品管理局就是呃通过的是五种药啊。那么现在呢，有医生呢都是在用这几这五种。这个呢，它是治，就是说不能够治好这个疾病，但是呢，它能够针对一些症状，能减轻一下这个疾病的症状。In clinical trials. These drugs that are approved by the FDA have been shown to help a person to be significant in helping a person with their symptoms for a period of time. 啊，那么就是临床实验呢，也是就这些药呢，就是对这个具体病人的这个帮助呢，就是有些呢时间长一点，有些呢时间短一点，就是能够减轻一下症状。And certain drugs are approved at certain stages of the disease. So you can see here this first one, Razadine. Approved in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, Aricept and Exelon approved for all stages of the disease, 
Nemenda in moderate to severe disease when it progresses. And then Nemzeric is a combination of two of the medicines above and approved in moderate to severe disease for people to help with people's symptoms. 那么这几种药呢,就是它有各种不同的阶段的疾病 but what I want to note is that none of these medications have been shown or proven to slow or to prevent the progression of Alzheimer's disease. 好,那么我们就要给大家讲,虽然说现在这些药都在用,但是呢,就是我们强调的呢是,它是对症,就是一些症状可以减轻,但是呢,它没有,就是说不会,还没有达到治疗这个疾病的这个效果。and that's really where UCI mind comes in. Patients deserve better treatments, and people who are cognitively healthy and who might be at risk for developing the disease need treatments to help prevent it. And so I'm going to talk a little bit after a break about some of the exciting research that's happening at UCI to address this. 好,那么我们UCI就是这个研究所,神经疾病研究所,那么我们现在做什么呢?所以我们呢就是希望能够做一些正在做,就是希望做的一些实验或者一些临床研究,那么希望能够找到这个药,那么下面呢我们稍微休
And in all of these centers, the map is kind of uh, hard to see, but in these centers, of these other, these 30 centers across the country, to do cutting edge science, to um, better understand the things that are, to try to learn more about the things that are causing Alzheimer's disease, and studying the things that we might be able to do to prevent and delay the disease from ever happening. 好,那么呢,我们就是30家这个研究中心之一,那么我们的主要目标呢,就是要找出这个疾病到底是有什么引起的,然后呢,我们能够做些什么,不管是从医药方面,从其他方面呢,来防治这个疾病。UCI Mind is a collection of researchers, faculty researchers from across UCI's campus, from over 10 schools and departments across campus, that have come together to study Alzheimer's disease and related disorders to discover the causes, treatments, and preventions for the disease. 好,那么我们UCI Mind 这个词呢是一个缩写,那么是UCI这个记忆障碍和神经疾病研究中心。那么这个研究中心呢是由其他,就是它是学校里面的实所,实所以上的这些学院,各个学院, as you've learned, Alzheimer's is a very complex disorder. And so it's going to require a lot of brilliant minds coming together to better understand this disease and try to help the patients and families and people who are at risk for developing the disease. So UCI Mind is very unique in that it's um, over 50 um, multidisciplinary faculty now there are several ongoing research studies at UCI Mind, and I'm going to talk to you about some of those now. One of our hallmark research studies that we have in common with the other 29 centers across the United States is the Longitudinal Research Study. 好,那么下面我想介绍一下我们所做的这些研究。那么我们最主要的一个呢,就是跟其他的这个研究中心共同拥有这个项目,那就是一个长期跟踪研究这样一个项目。This is a research study where we enroll people who have healthy cognition, people who have mild cognitive impairment, and people who have Alzheimer's disease. And we assess their cognition annually, once a year, over time. 好,那么在这个项目里面,我们怎么跟踪呢?就是说,呃,每年呢,就是这些志愿者,就是他们要参加。那么参加的人呢,可以是,就是没有记忆问题的,也可以是已经有些记忆问题,已经脱诊断,已
That data that is collected over time and every year and over a very long period of time is very valuable to researchers in better understanding, um, improving our understanding of the disease and the progression of people's brain health as they age. 那么这些我们每年一年积累起来这些数据呢，就是对我们的一个很大的帮助，就是说这个人他在年龄增长的时候，那么他的大脑是怎么变化，他的行为是怎么变化的。Currently in the program, forty percent of our research participants are healthy adults. Um, thirty percent have mild cognitive impairment, and about thirty, the last thirty percent have Alzheimer's disease or related dementia. 那么在我们的这一些三百多个人当中呢，有百分之四十还是属于正常的，就是说呃他们没有什么问题。那么有百分之三十呢，我们叫做轻度的障碍。那么另外的百分之三十呢，就是已经诊断，比如说是阿阿
does not equal a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So a person could have elevated amyloid in their brain and never develop the disease. 那么，但是呢，在最后呢，我想呃讲一下，就是说，比如说你大脑里面有这个蛋白质的沉积，但是并不认为就是说，哦，你有呢，你就是已经被诊断为疾病了。有些人呢，就是大脑里面带这些东西，但是呢，他没有这个症状。But what we do know is that someone with evidence of elevated brain amyloid is at a significantly increased risk to get Alzheimer's disease. Compared to somebody the same age who does not have amyloid accumulation. Ah, 那么我们所知道的呢，就是说，如果就是同样同样年龄的人啊，那么有人是大脑里面有这样的蛋白质沉淀，那么他们的这个呃风险性呢，就比没有大蛋白质沉淀那些人要高，并不是说他一定要得，但是他风险比较高。Now these tools are used primarily for research purposes, but they can be used sometimes clinically. If a physician is really having a hard time identifying what the etiology of a person's cognitive and memory problems might be, then they might order a scan to help aid the diagnosis. But again, they're very expensive. They're not covered by insurance yet, and so they're not um, they're not routinely used in clinical care. 好，那么就是在看这个呃这个大脑里边这个大蛋白质沉积这种情况呢，还有一个呢是用来做呃。研究。另外呢，有时候就是医生在他判断的时候，比如说是他要真正找到这个原因，那么帮助医生来做诊断，他也可以用这种方式，但是它比较贵，现在就是还没有普遍来用。So, as I mentioned in the research setting, we may use this information to instruct who may be the best candidates for trying promising new treatments. So, at UCI Mind.、Um, we actually have researchers who are in the laboratories working to identify possible new treatments for the disease. 啊，那么 UCI 呢，我们就是具体到了，我们有研究者啊，有我们有研究的呃这个科学家，那么在具体的就是在做这个研究。Working with things like mouse models and stem cells and brain models to be able to test potential new drugs. 啊，那么他们呢，就是当然了，实验呢，用用小老用老鼠啊，还有这个大脑的这些，那那么来呃测试这个药有没有作用。In this picture is Dr. Kim Green. He and Dr. Frank Laferla, who's the director of the Alzheimer's Disease Research Center at UCI Mind,、um, discovered that high doses of vitamin B3 could actually、um, affect memory in mice. 那么就是这位研究者，他的名字叫啊那个 Dr. Green， 还有呢一个我们的就是这个项目的一个主任，原来他们在做一次实验，就是他在老鼠那个地方做实验，就是维生素 B3 就 B3 这个呢，它呢对记忆会有呃，就是对记忆呃能够促进记忆。And because of this promising finding that UCI mind researchers discovered in the labs at UCI. The University of California system funded UCI Mind to actually conduct a clinical trial in people with early Alzheimer's disease or memory problems to see if high doses of vitamin B3 can actually affect people's memory and、um, halt neurofibrillary tangles in the brain. 好，那么由呃就是呃我们有了那个老鼠那个实验，那么那个 U U C 这个系统呢就。有一部分这个呃资金，那么就让这个实验室的这个科学呢，在人方，在这个人身上来做这个实验，就是这个我们刚才说的这个呃，维维生素 B3。那么现在呢，已经有这个实验了，就是要看一下大量的服用这个维生素 B 能不能就是在这个大脑里边呢，把这些清除掉。So in addition, in addition to developing treatments and medications in the laboratory. We translate those into clinical trials of promising therapies in people. So the one I just talked about is the NEAT clinical trial. We're asking the question if vitamin B3 can halt or reverse tangles in Alzheimer's disease. We're also conducting a clinical trial of exercise. Can exercise actually slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease? We know from observational research that exercise, like I mentioned. Can have a significant effect on reducing a person's risk, 
But could we say, in a gold standard clinical trial, that it can actually um, delay the onset or slow the progression? We're working to answer that question. And then Genentech is another research study that's testing whether a drug can um, slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. 那么这三个比较大的这个研究呢，就是我刚才第一个呢，我们提到一下，就是维生素 B 三这个研究啊。那么第二个呢，就是说，因为我们都平常大家都知道，要这个锻炼对大脑有好处。那么但是我们能不能回答这样一个问题，就是锻炼确实是能够延缓你这个生这个呃阿尔兹海默氏这个疾病？那么我们现在呢是具体的做到了，在在做临床试验啊。那么第三个呢，就是要试测试一些药物。那么看那个药能不能就是延缓这个疾病。And an exciting area of research is that we're now conducting the first ever prevention clinical trials for Alzheimer's disease in healthy older adults. 啊，那么另外一个比较啊激动人心的就是现在呢，我们在做一个就是怎么来预防，在这做这样一个实验。So a prevention trial. Enrolls people may enroll people who are asymptomatic and at risk for Alzheimer's disease. 那么我们呃要就是要呃要收的这些人呢，希望大家来参加的就是他们还没有没有这个症状，没有症状反映出来。And we identify those people by performing brain scans, like I talked about earlier, by performing brain scans or cerebrospinal fluid analysis. To determine whether a person has elevated amyloid in their brain. Ah, 那么我们怎么来找到这些研究对象呢？那么就是先，呃，就是刚才我们提到的，用用一个这个大脑这个扫描，就看一下他的大脑里面有没有这种蛋白质的沉淀，或者是用这个呃取一点脑脊液，那么看看他的脑脊液里面有没有这些蛋白质。那么这样呢，来呃识别这些人，然后呢，让他们呢来做一下我们的临床实，呃，我们进行研究。So um, these studies enroll people who have no symptoms of memory problem, but who may have evidence of a biomarker or risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. So we enroll the people who are at greatest risk, like I mentioned, who may be the most likely to benefit from a preventative or disease delaying treatment. 好，那么这种预防性的研究呢，就是说我们这些人呢，他还没有出现什么症状。就是你，你平常就看不出来，你就是还没有人说哦，他的记忆不好或怎么样，他是就是没有症状。但是呢，就是通过这个大脑扫描或者通过这个呃呃这个那个脑脊液的检查，那么他们已经有这种存在，有这种蛋白质的存在啊。所以他们这些呢，就是比较比较适合的这个呃研究对象。By enrolling people who are at the greatest risk um, and who are not yet showing any Problems of memory or cognitive problems. It allows us to conduct shorter trials, um, shorter and smaller trials, to follow people for a shorter period of time, thus finding treatments faster. 好，那么这种情况呢，就是我们已经知道他们的基本的一些呃，就大脑里边还有他们的这个脑脊液里有。那么这种呃，能够使我们的研究者呢，就是用在短时间内就用一点药物呢，就是这样的就效果呢，就见得比较快一些。UCI Mind is always conducting clinical trials of promising new therapies. I talked to you about a few that are actively enrolling in people who have um, memory concerns or um, early Alzheimer's disease, and then we will, we will be starting trials in the near future that are prevention in people who are healthy older adults, and we are actively studying prevention drugs right now. 那么我们呢，就是呃，我们在我们的研究，当然了，就是我们刚才提到的哈，有些呢就是已经开始了，但是呢，就是说这个预防性的研究呢，我们现在已经正在准备，那么马上就会开始。So I'd like to end the lecture in telling you how you can get involved in helping us fight this disease. 好，那么最后一部分呢，我就要是想介绍给大家，那么你们大家怎么样能够会来参与和帮助我？ Everybody can do their part, and we need lots of help from a lot of different people. This is a very complex disease, like I've talked about, and it's going to take researchers and collaboration with the community to eventually eradicate Alzheimer's disease. 
啊，那么这个疾病就是我们说的是非常一个复杂的疾病，我们需要在上面花很多的功夫，那么我们也需要很多的人来参与进来，那么帮助我们来，我们一起共同来找到一个方式。So what can you do to help us? How can we collaborate in this fight? 嗯，那么我们看看大家能做什么，能够来帮助我们，我们一起来就是来战胜这个疾病。First, you can advocate. You can advocate by talking to your friends and other community members about the exciting research that's happening at UCI Mind and around the country and around the world. You can educate people about the disease and about the importance of getting an early diagnosis to be able to learn about community resources and help families who are living with the disease. 好，那么第一个呢，我讲到的就是大家呢可以帮助我们宣讲啊，就是让自己的朋友啊、家人啊，让别的人知道。那么我们你在这个里面学到了一些什么 ？UCI 或者是呃全国各地的这个呃科研者啊、科研机构啊，那么他们呢是在做些什么来进行对这个疾病的研究 ？And yesterday was voting day. You can contact your elected officials to advocate. You can write to them or call them to advocate for attention. On increasing funding for supportive services for people with Alzheimer's and increasing funding for research. 啊，那么另外一个就是我们都呃，昨天就是一个呃选大选日啊。那么我们也可能呃可以给我们的这些啊，就是呃，不不管社区的人呐，这些这些写信啊、建议啊，怎么样让他们呢能够增加我们的经费 ？Secondly, you could donate. UCI Mind, as I mentioned, is one of 30 centers that's funded by the National Institutes of Health. 啊，那么第二个呢，就是大家可以捐赠啊。那个捐赠呢，我们呢是就是刚才跟大家讲到，全国有三十个中心，我们是 UCI 是其中之一。But we are a nonprofit who also accepts private philanthropic donations to help us do even more cutting-edge science that not that is not necessarily funded by the NIH. 那么我们是一个呃非盈利组织啊，那么我们呢就是说，呃，国家卫生院对我们有些支持，但是我们也希望大量的这个经费能够拿到呢，能够做更多的研究。And perhaps the most valuable way that people can help us is by participating in research. 啊，那么我们说是最重要的啊，最有价值的，那么希望大家能够参与我们这个研究。What a lot of people don't know is that the single most common reason that clinical research studies fail is slow or inadequate recruitment to studies. 啊，那么可能很多人都不知道为什么很多的临床试验都失败呢？那么最主要的原因呢，就是没有足够的人来参加。We need more people who are willing to volunteer. We cannot find. Preventions and treatments and cures for diseases without research participants and involvement from the community. 就是我们需要很多的人来参加。如果我们没有参加者，那么我们这个研究呢就没有呃就不会有什么结果，是吧 ？So to try to help our community learn about the exciting research opportunities at UCI, we launched a couple years ago an online tool called the UCI. Consent to Contact or C2C Registry. 好，那么我们有一个就是一个注册在网上注册的，我们中文里面呢叫做是呃，我们跟你联系，然后希望你会同意，哈，就这样一个意思。那么就是说，让你的上网去注册一下。This is a tool where community members, anybody 18 years and older, can go put their email online. And then receive an email to follow a link and complete a short inform informational survey about themselves, so that they can learn about studies at UCI that they might be eligible for. 好，那么这个呢，就是说你上呃把那个呃你的邮件地址好打进去，然后呢你就会收到一个呃邮件呢，希望你呢能够到一个就是再点一个 link 进去的，就是把你的一些基本情况填一下。那么这个呢，不光是 UCI Mind， 就是说，呃，就是 UCI 所有的研究机会，那么都会给你介绍。It's completely free, voluntary, and confidential. Your information will be kept private in this registry. 啊，那么你把呃里面填的一些你的信息啊，这些呢都是保密的，不
And by filling out the survey, you as a potential participant would only learn about studies that you might be eligible for. So it's kind of like a dating service for research. <laughs> 那么这个呢就是它只会就是我们这样的就是把你配对嘛就是说只有你适合的这个实验或者适合的研究你才会收到这样的信息 So if you're interested in participating or even possibly participating in the future a great way to get involved is by enrolling in the UCI C2C registry today and there's a little check box on the cards that we handed out, the very top checkbox um, gives us permission to add your email to the registry and then you would receive the survey to fill out if you're interested. Also, Ivy has iPads in the back where she can enroll you today if you're interested. She also had, Ivy also has specific information about the current um, clinical trials and research studies that we're conducting at UCI Mind. Some other check boxes on here um, are, at, you can sign up for our quarterly newsletter. We send a newsletter out in the mail to educate the community on the, the uh, updates and research and things that are happening at UCI Mind. Um, and I can't read it. Um, you could be added to our email list where you would learn more about education events that are happening throughout the community. We do educational lectures like this all the time. Um, so you can join us at any of these. Um, and you can also check to be contacted to Give a philanthropic donation if you're interested in that. 好,其实刚才那个卡上面呢,就是有各种各样的选择了哈。如果大家需要,希望我们能够联系你啊,希望我们能够把那个我们的就是寄刊给你寄过来,还有一些我们在讲演呀,还有一些这些信息啊,给你
So in the registry that I talked about, the UCI C2C registry, when you fill out the health information survey, it'll ask you questions like, are you willing to have a lumbar puncture? Are you willing to have a brain scan? Are you willing to donate your brain when you pass away? Things like that. And you have the option to say yes or no. And then you would only be contacted about studies that match your interests. So if you're not really willing to undergo those types of things, then you would not have to, okay? Research is completely voluntary, and you would always be notified and have the opportunity to ask all of the questions that you have to the research uh, physicians and the research team before ever considering and finalizing being in a study. 那么就是说在研究里面在研究上面呢我们就讲到这些上去填了这个注册以后呢会问你问题比如说你愿不愿意捐赠你的大脑啊你愿不愿意做这个就是这个脑企业的检查啊愿不愿意做这个大脑的
county research, clinical search, she mentioned that you use some radioactive uh, in your blood and to test the brand. Oh, right. And then to show up the, how, how they affect it. Yes. So um, an amyloid PET scan, like I talked about earlier, um, may involve an inject. It does involve an injection of a slightly radi radioactive agent to be able to view pictures of the brain. Um, and again, if that was something that was concerning to you, um, first of all, before undergoing any sort of procedure like that, you would have all of your questions and concerns and talk about the risk factors with the, with the research physician before undergoing any type of procedure, invasive procedure. So this is similar to your question. Um, and also, as I mentioned, if that's something that you do not um, want to undergo, that's totally fine. And then I would just um, ask you on your, if you join the UCI C2C registry to make sure that you say that's something you don't want to be involved in and then we wouldn't contact you about that, okay? Okay,那么就是如果说是现在,大家如果对这个有问题,有疑问的话,就是你可以选择不参加,这个都是自愿的,所以我们一定是要等你,就是让你有了足够的认识,那么你才愿意参加或者不参加,这个都是你自己选择
But the nice thing about the online UCI C2C registry is that there's no risks and there's no obligation because all you're doing is telling us about yourself and then you would make a decision once somebody contacts you about whether you want to participate in the study. 就是如果你登记了以后呢，有人如果跟你联系了，那么你完全是自愿的，就是说你愿意参加还是不愿意参加，在你了解了这个研究之后，那么你会做出决定，就是完全是自愿的。You mentioned about the, the, the source of problem of this uh, old timer, or uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gene, uh, I mean, our, our gene, gene problem. But the, but the gene is uh, able to repair now, in a, in a, in a, we're able to repair now. So we think this can be, uh, can be cure to repair a gene. So your question is about the genetic risk factor for the disease. Um, so as I mentioned, researchers have identified genes that are associated with risk for Alzheimer's disease. However, none of those genes are determinant. So what I mean about that is that just because somebody has inherited a risk gene from a parent, it does not necessarily mean that they will get Alzheimer's disease. And a person can get Alzheimer's disease who has no family history and no genetic risk factor. Does that answer your question?那么你说是现在已经有基因修补的这样一个技术了 Although we do not yet know the cause of Alzheimer's disease, experts believe it's a combination of genetic and lifestyle factors. 你的整个人的环境啊，你的生活方式啊，这些等等问题都是这个很复杂的一个一个关联，就是。嗯。再来两个新闻，对吗？Thank you very much. Yeah, man. Ah,那等下啊，有些买啊，因为。三位工作人员来跟咱分享一下吼，啊，咱咱陈教授啊，小可贡献一点啊，开了一一个research啦吼，咱拍拍来跟咱多谢吼，啊，今天。